graduating from college and great yay, you know, parents came to your graduations, everyone's rooting for you, you got your degree or got another degree, you still gotta get a job, right? Or if you wanna start a business. But this these are this is for folks that want to get a job. So for one, the first thing you need to focus on after you graduate um, is you're going to have to update your resume. And I think a lot of times that's probably one of the biggest red flags of the reason why a lot of people are not getting selected. They have old material on their resume. They've done so many new things in life and the same information is on there. They've taken on projects, they've taken on different roles, whatever it may be, and that stuff is not on their resume. Your resume needs to be short and sweet. I wanna let you know that it needs to be one page and you need to tailor make uh, your resume to the position that you're applying for. We were always taught that you just do that with the cover letter. Nope, cover letter and resume. So your resume doesn't need to be having uh, experience as a waitress if you're, you're trying to work for, um, you know, a, get an HR role or be a CFO or be an engineer. We don't need to know that you are a waiter. Not saying that that role doesn't have any benefit and no substance, but you, the goal is, is less is more. And you don't want to just have stuff on that resume that just taking up space where it could, you can literally put something on there that is more meaningful uh, to that potential recruiter. So make sure that the resume is tailor made to the actual role. Make sure it's um, one page. Uh, and make sure that you just give them in a nutshell what you did in the role. You see people, they, they create these large paragraphs, all the things they've done. And I get they want to show that they did a lot, but just include the most important roles, or important things you did there. These companies want to see what did you fix? What did you change? What were you number one in? Like what, like what did you, like how were you a change agent in that? specific role so include that on there as well and in any volunteer and things you've done in the community i know a lot of folks that don't have any work experience get afraid of, uh, about this but you can include all your internships all the things that you've done in the community volunteer and all that that's that is still applicable as well next cover letter cover letter in a nutshell um you know well i'll tell you the resume in a nutshell is just t telling people what your experience is right and why based off of the experience on there why you are good for the role right why are you or at least starting point um good for the role and I, I tell people all the time that when you are applying um and the role says you got to have this you got to have that you might not have that but you can word your resume in a way where say i may not have that but i have done this in this capacity or I may not have any experience in this role, but this role that I had on here on my resume, it was the first time I've ever done it and I was able to learn it and grow and learn these different apps and programs. So there's still a lot of transferable things that you can, can work on with that. And I'll talk to you about that um, on the next video. Um, so next, the cover letter. The cover letter is basically, it is, it's a snapshot, it's basically um, why you think you're the best one for the role, why based off of like your introduction, based off of your experience and, and your years in that role, why you are, um, you know, a good fit for the role. And, you know, basically hoping that if they have the time to review the cover letter and your resume um, and look forward to them reaching out. Um, and so just sending that directly to that that company and talking specifically for the actual role. So yes, you can make a general cover letter, but specifically include that role that you are applying for. I'll tell you, the recruiter is going to spend way more time reading cover letters in the resume. Resume, they might read just enough, uh, but for the most part, the cover letter uh, is basically you your elevator speech um, to get people to go to want to learn more about your resume and, 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 and move it forward. Next, I don't suggest any of you, um, in my personal opinion, don't apply on Indeed, don't apply on ZipRecruiter, Monster Jobs, if they still use that. 
I don't even think you should reply on LinkedIn jobs because it's becoming like Indeed. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is because you have to think about what's going to make you stand out. And on Indeed, there's a hundred of you. Um, on on, on ZipRecruiter, there's a hundred of you, right? Well, people that have probably your qualifications or even more, and everybody is on there. So it's hard for you to stand out in that regard. Um, and, you know, you have to think about a recruiter can, they're going to look at only so, so much, so many, you know, so much, uh, uh, applications that after a while, they're going to just start declining, declining because they don't have time to review all of that information. Um, and, you know, so you see a lot of times to be like great cap, um, applicants that end up getting, uh, a rejection notice and it's not because they're not qualified or not good candidates it's just that recruiter doesn't have time to go through all those applications um, I'll talk more about that so apply on the company website I know it's easy easier to apply on indeed it's easier to apply on uh, zip recruiter or LinkedIn uh, but I would say the reason why you apply on the company website is that they usually mainly all you use, use, use Workday. There's some of them that just use a simpler format or uh, app than that as well. But um, one thing I would say is the benefit of applying on a company website is that even if you get the job through Indeed, ZipRecruiter, LinkedIn, eventually they're still going to tell you you have to go on the company website in order to get in the system. So that actually helps you skip a step and you're already in the system. You're already... Um, so when they're looking to go the background check route and move on to getting you hired and work that they use that you don't have to apply all over again and go through that whole formality so um that's why i was saying though with the resume to make that resume as 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 simple as possible less is more um and just have the dates correct all the information because when it populates when you apply on these company website usually they actually if you want to upload the resume and it populates that information is going to populate in that actual website uh, through the application and if it's so much data and so much information it's probably not going to populate correctly and then it'll cause you to have to continually manually put in um you know more information You're like man i should basically it's just all this manual because it's not populating everything so you get discouraged because it didn't populate the dates right and it populate all your roles correctly that's why you just have have things short and sweet you shouldn't have to have a large paragraph for each role that you've had um just highlight the things that would wow someone or woo someone like wow you you were the first to do that at your company or you were number one in this or um you handle this 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 like just a lot of bullets on, on that in that regard to, to help you in that regard all right um so the first step after you have applied is that you're usually going to get an email in reference uh to two ways you're going to get an email asking you your availability uh for a phone interview or you have to put that information when you're applying to ask you if you are offered a position or, or uh, potentially interview times, how soon can you start? So usually they're able to go based off of that information on the application, but some will just reach out to you and, and, and do the interview on the spot and say, this, this is a good time. The phone interview, I know they're not going to tell you this, but like I said, the phone interview is just basically focused on, I would say, two things. Um, actually three things the feel of you so they got a good vibe good feel of you if you're interested in the role if you know anything about the company right so they want to see if you did any type of research right um, scheduling like does does your schedule availability uh, align with what they're looking for do you align with what the role calls for and then the biggest one is salary salary they're going to ask you if you know you the salary is something that you're you're going to take are you going to are you willing to take the minimum um and then like i said this is the best time for you to negotiate um i would say even if you got to negotiate for 500 500 dollars a thousand um it's just always good to get something more 
out of the situation. A lot of times people just take the first um, option. I would suggest all of you negotiate every single time. Never just take uh, what they offer, but keep it in the framework of the the salary that they have presented. I tell people all the time, I don't believe in applying to any role. You should not apply to any role that does not have a salary. I don't think that's respectful. I don't think that is ethical, in my opinion. Um, a, a person going through all that, going through the phone screen, in-person interview, offered a job and they don't find out how much they make until the end of the process and I don't think that should be the case. So um, I think it's very important for you to apply to jobs that um, have the salary info on there. So yeah, negotiate. So that first phone call is basically screening. Like it's screening you if if you are potentially, you know, financially are we willing to Take a risk on somebody that is like a top tier candidate. We'll pay them five thousand, ten thousand. I would say they always shortchange you on the interview process about five to ten thousand, um, just to see if they can get the least, uh, get you to sign on to the least amount uh, of pay. Uh, so that is something that you have to understand that the first offer is not the, the usually the best offer. Um, you got to negotiate to get to that. And usually they have an extra five to ten thousand dollars on the table, um, so make sure you negotiate in that regard. Now, when you when you go past that phone interview and they like what they're hearing, now they're gonna tell you, okay, we would like to we'll get back to you if we decide that we want to move on to you. So I usually have either that same person that screened you or another person call you to set up an in-person interview. Right nowadays they're doing the Zoom. Um, some people are doing in person. I just want you to know with that interview, all that interview is basically if the person that was quote unquote managing you or the person that quote unquote runs that company, uh, what do they think about you from a character standpoint? Um, they'll ask you more situational questions than the, the first uh, interview. So that first interview screen and the second interview is more interviewing how you handle difficult uh, co-workers, how do you handle uh, deadlines, how do you handle uh, time management, Time management. Uh, how do you handle uh, multitasking. Um, I always tell folks to not tell anybody that you're good at multitasking on the job. I wouldn't say that you're bad at it, but I wouldn't use that because you might get into a role where they keep throwing a million things at you, the pay doesn't change, uh, but they can continue to give you more. So I, I wouldn't say that, but it's that is all situ situational. Um, and I'll let you know the questions that they'll, they'll ask you on these is they'll ask you what it means to 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 to, to give good service to uh, you know the customer, or what it mean to uh, you know be a good teammate or, or, or a good a co-worker to someone then I always ask you also to tell, tell me about a time where you have you done something uh, that no one else asked you to do like you went above and beyond I'll uh, ask you something like that and what made you do it they also ask you to describe you know a time when you had to be around someone that maybe came from different upbringing than you or had a different uh, personality or a different culture or whatever it may be how did they interact with with that individual and that's more of a inclusion type of question um, and then they'll also ask you the question that a lot of people that don't answer and that's the question is do you have any questions for me and I'd say this is the reason why a lot of people don't do well in interviews because they say nothing you need to interview them as well ask them why the role is open ask them um you know, are you going to get any support in the role and ask them specifics, you know, and give them like scenarios that you will be in. Let's say you're in a, in a position or in a role and you feel like, you know, 
you're at a crisis, you, you need help, whatever, like how would you receive help? Would it be via phone? Would it be in person? Would it be somebody actually that's there on site or off site? That question will blow them away because they're not used to hearing that. Also ask them, why is the role open? Why is it vacant? You see, they tell you the truth. A lot of them don't tell you the truth. They say, oh, it's vacant because the person just, you know, got promoted. That's the number one thing they, they'll say. And then you get there and, and see that a person ain't, ain't promoted at all. They would just let go. They were they were forced out. So the thing is, you got to ask them these questions. Um, a lot of times when you go into these interviews, the second, the second phase, it usually don't have HR that much in the mix. It's more of the managers, and the managers don't really, they have more like questionnaires, they have sheets of paper, whereas the initial phone screen is someone that's probably been doing that for a long time, and they can pretty much know it by heart. So that's what you have to understand is that the interview is going to get a little bit easier um, based off of the situational aspect of it. They're just going to ask you situational questions, and you just think about from people that have work experience, how transferable you can transfer to those situational questions. Um, and then um, from someone that does not have work experience, you can just transfer, transform that uh, into any projects or internships that you've ever had and go from there. All right, so, but yeah, when you get on the interview, make sure you dress up, dress nice, uh, you groom, you, you, your, your, you know, your dress to impress. Make sure you have a copy of your resume. Make sure you're early. Uh, make sure that you're looking at them in their eyes when they're talking to you. You're engaged. Uh, that you're enthusiastic about the role. Um, and then this is something I left off. They're going to ask you one question that trips up a lot of folks is, what is your weakness? And a lot of people are just like, oh my goodness, what is my weakness? You know, a lot of them say they don't have one. One of the, the the responses that you can use that I think is a great response is your weakness is asking for help. Trying to put everything on your shoulders because you know you can get it done, you can get it correct, and just learn how to rely on others that they can also get it done with you and, and have more of a collaborative role. Um, you know, Especially if you're going to go into a manager role, just having the faith that that person is going to be able to help you. And if not, giving them the, the coaching uh, that they they need uh, in, in, in regards to, um, you know, helping you out and, and getting to the promised land, so to speak. Um, and another thing is they'll ask you this question is, what type of management do you like? Do you like somebody that's micromanaging you? Do you like someone that gives you liberty and space to be able to get things done? Uh, so they'll ask, ask you that as well. Uh, but in a nutshell, that is usually how it goes. I've seen people check all these boxes based off of us consulting them, right? Check all these boxes, right? But really, this is just small aspect of it. Doing the work and learning the work and getting the, you know, getting acclimated to the role is what really suggests that that's a good hire or not. And then if a company has training that, you can ask that on the interview. How's the training? Like, it's amazing to me how these companies will say you got to have a degree to do this or you got to have related experience to do that, but they still got to train you. And I would think, honestly, it would it would be easier for somebody to train someone that don't think they know everything, don't think they um, you know already have things figured out, then it would be to someone that knows everything and has a ton of experience in this, that, and the third the training piece would, would really be a lot of back and forth and not a lot of listening. So that is usually how it goes. Um, after the interview is over, you can send them an email, complimentary email. Thank you for your time. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to interview with me. I had a, you know, it's great meeting you guys and learning more about the company. Um, you know, I always say this on the, the in-person interview, you need to know uh, applicants, I'm going to let you know this. You need to know the company's vision, the company's story, um, and then they're going to ask you why you applied. So be honest, you know. They'll ask you, you know, you're in a role um, that you somewhat like. Why, what made you leave? Now, you can say 
that there wasn't room for growth. There's a glass ceiling, but don't bash your previous employer. Don't bring up any cases that you got against that employer. That usually causes folks not to want to bring you in or hire you. Um, so I would just say just just focus on that glass ceiling. Like, yeah, this is the highest I could go. Um, you know, and then or just highlight the things that you you that company does better than your last company. They're fine with you seeing how great they are in comparison to, to the company that you are saying, you know, you guys, you know, you're moving with the times, you guys are tech savvy, you're this, that, and the third. And and that's what you can do. Now, for the ones that don't have any work experience, um, again, highlight your volunteer work. Hi- highlight that you're trainable. Highlight that um, you, you're someone that, um, you know, is hungry, you are, are motivated to learn and grow, um, and, you know, tell them you can put me on a 90-day um, probationary period, and I, you'll show them that this is the best hire they've ever had. So they like to see enthusiasm, they like to see drive, um, and they, you know, the bottom line is, do they have a good feeling for you? So that is usually how it goes, interviews over, you send that email, and this is how you can play this card is, you notice how when you go on an interview and they tell you they'll get back to you in a couple of days because they got more interviews? Well, let them know you got more interviews as well. Never make them think that you are, um, that they are your only option. I think that's what puts a lot of people in a bad situation where it's like, these companies like, oh, I'll get back to you, like, ah. Oh. No, let them know that there's urgency and, and they'll understand that in this current, you know, hiring climate that coming across a decent, good, great candidate is you don't have time to waste. You don't have time to waste and that is just like a form of a company's currency. So let them know that you have interviews coming up and people are going to be giving you a couple of answers in the coming days. So make it around the same time that they said they're going to get back to you. Say, oh, yeah, we'll get back to you in three days. Say, well, okay, great. Um, I got a couple companies getting back to me in two days. So, you know, I definitely just want to be open and honest with you. And I'm looking at other places as well. That will blow their mind. We're like, wow, they'll have to have some urgency in that regard. Um, so after you do that, you know, they'll get back to you. Then you can ask them this final question is, is there any more flexibility with the salary? Doesn't hurt to ask. They might say no. Uh, they might say yes. Let's get back to you and go from there. So that right there is how to get hired fresh out of college. Um, I tell people all the time, another unorthodox way to get a job, um, and I'll talk more about this in my next video, is going on LinkedIn and reaching out uh, to recruiters and telling them 